I really felt that those days that chemotherapy made me feel sick, um, okay, great. That means that it's obviously doing what it's meant to do. You know, if I did coast through and I didn't experience any side effects or I didn't feel anything, I'd be worried that they'd given me a placebo and I was wasting my time. The physical part of a surgery, um, other than the long-lasting effects, you get over a lot of it pretty quickly, um, relatively quickly anyway. The radio and chemo is uh, extensive, it's long, and, and it does uh, grind you down. It, uh, you certainly get knocked around by it. You just listen to your body and you spend time in bed. If you have a bad day, you spend time in bed. If I got emotional, I wallow in that in bed for a day. But you just, it's, you just get through it uh, by using those distractions and the things you love and the people around you that are there for you. Your whole life does become about the treatment and everything that you're doing and managing any side effects, any nausea, anything like that. I still found that trying to maintain some sort of routine did help. You can be vulnerable, mm. you can be fragile, but you can still be the carer. You can still cope and be mm. stoic and do all those other things, but occasionally um, you need to be fragile allow yourself to be what you don't want to be allow yourself to to be emotional to cry in the corner and say this is okay i my body needs to go to bed for the day or i need to cry in the corner for a week but that's okay because it's about allowing yourself to do it uh, i need support so i'm going to be brave and i'm going to uh, go to the support group that, that's what being kind to yourself is. Not make your life too busy, mm. just really um, just focus on, on what really is important and what needs to be done and, and realise that there are some things that can just be, be left and some things might, you know, the garden might grow a bit out of control or, you know, things might get a bit, you might get a bit behind with the housework or whatever, but yeah, I guess priorities change. Don't save anything for a bucket list, yeah? If you want to do something, do it. You know, do it now. Don't, don't put it in that bucket list and eventually get to it um, because you never know. When they tell you that you'll, you'll feel tired, you know, like the, that your energy levels will be zapped, you can't even begin to prepare yourself for what that fatigue feels like. Yeah, you, you can literally be chatting and perfectly fine and you might sit down just for a couple of minutes and you will, you, it's like you just feel every bit of energy just completely go out through your feet. I lost 20 kilos, over 20 kilos um, from not being able to eat large. So now I'm very cheap to take out to dinner. My husband likes it. <laughs> I'd get up and walk as much as I could twice a day and I found that that was um, pretty useful. But that walking was not far, you know, two lengths of a house and oh, three initially, lengths. Initially, Yeah, you, you just have to build up. Yeah. Mm. You're monitored for five years, you know, like so they, they keep an eye on you and just make sure. I'm 12 months post surgery and I've just recently had my 12 months scans and everything and currently I'm cancer free. So fingers crossed, so far, so far, 12 months in, 12 months in. So now, three and a half years after my diagnosis, I feel that I am free of cancer, of esophageal cancer. I'm back creating on a creative basis, not the craft basis. I met a lot of milestones since that time. I reckon I've beaten it. 15 years is a long time. I remember at the end of treatment, um, sitting around the table, um, <laughs> wanting, to, uh, uh, wanting to set a few milestones really, or wanting to get to a few milestones, because at that stage, I certainly didn't think that I had beaten it. They're important that you make the milestones. It's a part of the emotional uh, strategies that you can use. So a huge operation in the June 
And then in the August, I flew to Spain with my artwork to make that exhibition. Uh, it wasn't very well. I was very weak. Uh, it was very difficult, but I got there and that was a huge, uh, a huge milestone. My biggest milestone is that I'm finally returning. After a year, I'm finally returning home to New York. I'm officially getting back to life. My outlook on life is a lot more simplistic, a lot more joyful. I think I appreciate lots of things now that maybe I took for granted beforehand. I didn't think I did, but looking back, perhaps I did. I've been able to get back into rowing. I've been able to compete overseas, receive medals, um, you know, I, I would never have believed that I was going to be able to do any of that stuff. A different note on saying that, yes, it all sounds nice and rosy. There are good days, he's great a lot of the time, but there's days when he's just not good at all and he just has to sleep. And that's actually hard for me to see. Could you expect him to be as good as he is most of the time? But then it falls back. Um, and that's not a lot. That's not a lot. The moment I was most proud of myself is when my son said to me how strong I was. <laughs> I'm really proud that I've uh, set that example for my children. That Although the challenges can be really hard and the fears, I'm not talking about pain or sickness. You get through that, it's the emotional challenges. And to be able to get through that and have your children say they're proud of you, it made me really proud of, um, of where I've came. You do need a support group behind you, I think. And we had that. Lots of family and friends. The more support you have, absolutely the more support you have, um, the easier the journey is going to be. And one of the things that was mentioned in one of our support meetings that we had one time was, you know, really wanting to get that information out to people that, you know, we've got this, we're there to help you and support you um, in whatever, you know, whatever you need. It was the most amazing experience because as soon as we met and started telling our stories and sharing our experiences, it was, it was the same. We all thought we would have different questions, but it was just a relief just to get into that room and know there was people in the same position that you're in and you, you're not alone, just not alone. I find that it's just such a safe, non-judgmental space and environment you know like we're all very open and free and it, it, yeah I've just found it amazing absolutely amazing it's become within no time it feels like a family you can do it you will find it and hopefully by watching all of us and listening you go yeah you know what I can I can do that I've, I've got that yeah. I can, I've got it definitely a journey it will be a new normal at the end of it, but follow every piece of advice and every bit of information that your doctors and surgeons give you um, to the T and you know, keep a really positive outlook and you've got this. Mm -hmm.